and it's Friday, which means that the car is getting picked up today. one of these babies down when you work outside. I ended up having to take the bumper off the car because it's so low to the ground that I couldn't get it on the trailer. So that's what I had to do. Here we go. There she is. Toothless herself. I mean, I guess it's a him, but yeah. Off to the next stage of the journey. Got a couple of ripped CV boots. Those are going to have to be replaced. And lots to clean up. What's up guys? It's the next morning and I didn't do a ton of filming last night because I just wanted to rock this out and get it as close to being ready to pull as possible. So I have a really short time to be here this weekend. So I just really, really wanted to focus on getting work done. I had a ton of family out here, which always makes it really difficult to film. Nevertheless, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I've got going on under here and kind of where we're at in the process. My manual says that this horizontal cross member needs to come out in order to remove the transmission. We have everything out but this one bolt right, let's see if we can get it here. We tried an impact gun, we tried a breaker bar, it is not budging. So. The next thing that we can try is using a torch on that to heat it, but I need to clean all this oil off first for safety. The other thing is, or where we're at, is I've got the lower mounts out, the bolts out here. Um, I've got, I wish the car, I'm not gonna lower it down for this purpose, but basically up top, this is what I've taken out. So the battery, battery tray, uh, the air cleaner, radiator hose, the different bolts, and then there's stuff in there that's just laying there. Um, I had to take out the starter, and it's also just laying in there because one of the bolts, uh, the wire is stripped, so it wouldn't come out. So I just left it in there for now, didn't want to mess with it. Um, just wanted to get as much access as possible. And so, yeah, now where we're, what we're doing next is we're going to, I need to make sure I've got as many of the bolts out of this bell housing as possible that I can reach, which I'm probably gonna have to lower the car anyway to do that. Um, we have to take off the wheels and get the CV axles out um which is always fun on a lift like this getting this cross member out and disconnecting all the mounts after we get that done and get these axles out the transmission will be ready to now we have been able to pretty much determine what is wrong with the uh car and I mean, it's probably a myriad of things, but the main thing that I think has been keeping this car from shifting is that um, the clutch fork, the release fork, I never noticed, unfortunately. Um, it just feels like it's wiggling in there. So I think what's happening is it's pushing the clutch release bearing, but it's not hooked into the brackets that it pulls it back. So it's just staying pushed in and not coming back out. So pretty sure that is the issue with it not being able to shift. And it, I'll try to show you in a video 
once I get it lowered down, but it's literally, I can move it up and down and do this and just like clink, 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 clink. It's, it doesn't sound good. So here's my release fork. It's just like really floppy in there. So I think this is honestly the main issue with the shifting. So we shall see. So I'm gonna check that out and uh, get that fixed. Also, I discovered one other thing while I was underneath here that I'll show you real quick. So obviously this car has a ton of rust, by the way, but this fender's coming off, so that'll take care of some of it. Um, we're gonna have to weld new rockers in and clean up um, this as much as we can. But coming under here, so my exhaust is really, really loud. And I just thought maybe this was, you know, had a little crack or something, but uh, it's not even connected. So that's why this car is so freaking loud. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this here, cut this here, and weld a new two and a half inch piece in and get rid of this janky uh, flex pipe. So that'll take care of the horribly loud exhaust right underneath my feet. Um, and then we're gonna end up having it route back out to this lovely muffler where it should be going. And then I'll see how the sound is. Um, oh, while I'm under here, I can finally clarify exactly what I have. So this is the Skunk 2 exhaust. It's in fairly decent condition. That, that's probably gonna be a problem here soon. Maybe we'll just fix that while we're under here. But here we go. Um, lots and lots of oil under here. And then the other thing is, if you look right here, that's my floor pan. This is my carpet. So I definitely need to do some sort of a patch panel in here uh, to try to get this solidified as much as possible. Um, got some rust under here. So lots of cleanup to do, but all this is secondary to getting the car running first. So we will do what we can a little bit at a time. And you know, my stepdad is helping me, which has been huge. As many of you know, you know, having two people to do things is so much better because he's got a lot of knowledge that I don't have. So if I get stuck on something, he's like, hey, why don't we try this? And it works out really great. He's not super familiar with these kind of cars, obviously, if you saw the Chevelle. Um, that's what he likes to work on is his uh, muscle cars. But it's been kind of fun because I've been able to teach him about imports and uh, show him that they're really not as scary as people make them out to be. Before we take the transmission out, I had to make sure to support the engine. So what we did was we built a custom support for it um, in order to hold it up on the fender. So my stepdad helped me fabricate uh, the whole thing. And right now we're making some footing and the risers. I had to weld off or grind off the paint so that the weld would not be contaminated. So that's what I'm doing right here. And then after we got that, we got some uh, steel uh, threaded bar so that we can use that to uh, lift and lower the engine as we needed to. And my stepdad just welded it up real quick for me since he's got the experience. And we decided to take the hood off. That way it doesn't hit when we lift up the uh, lift. And the engine's all supported now. So I went ahead and started working on taking out the control arms. And I was working on getting that driver's side bracket out right here. So I had to bust those bolts loose. There's three of them holding. Uh, or the one that holds the motor mount through and then there's three bolts that hold the mount to the body of the car so i just had to bust those babies loose you don't got a lot of me to get through push and pull me off into the deep and unless the pretend that nothing ever happened on that night
Good morning, everyone. So I'm back working on the Celica. I'm gonna try my best to get this transmission out today. I've got about six hours, and so far we've been running into issues every time I try to do something. So today we are taking off the axles. I've got the driver's side uh, pulled out of the transmission, but we still need to get it out of the hub. Um, should have done that first, but I didn't think about it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the passenger side axle right now and try to get that out of the hub. Uh, so far the axle nuts have been so tight that we haven't been able to get them out with an impact or with the breaker bar. So I put a bunch of PV blaster on it last night and we're going to let it soak and then or we let it soak overnight. Um, and I went and got a deep socket to fit better on the nut because um, the other one was hitting just a little bit. So it's starting to round the edges and I don't want to screw that up because then we'll never get it off. So that's where we're at. I've got two axles to get out, cross member support so that we can get those two um, transmission mounts out and then be able to drop the transmission. We're going to have to do some sort of fabrication on the uh, jack that we have because we don't have a transmission jack. So we're gonna try to make the, just the big regular jack work. Um, we'll see what we can do. But yeah, that's where we're at. If all goes smooth, we should be able to have a transmission out today. If it doesn't go smooth, then we'll have made some progress and I'll have to try again. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so definitely gonna need someone to push on the brakes because that's not working. <laughs> As much as I <laughs> oh there we go look at that boom boom shibby Whew. all right guys so I just took the rotor and the brake pads or the rotor and the caliper assembly off here now I need to detach these three bolts from the ball joint assembly and then I just got the uh, castle nut off the tie rod end. So I need to go ahead and get that pushed out. Um, and then after that, I think we're ready to start pushing the hub out, which is great for the axle out of the hub. Uh, and then I can need to do the same thing on the other side. Basically everything that I need to get off is being soaked in PB blaster because everything's so stuck. Um, so yeah, the next uh, little bit you're going to see is me getting the ball joint assembly off of there. Then I need to take these two bolts off right inside here. It's hard to see. There's one right there. But there's two bolts um, that are holding this right hand uh, axle assembly up. So I need to get that down, get it loose, and then it'll... Ooh, should have safety glasses on and then it'll be ready to just go right out I'm gonna go ahead and stick the impact on these ball joint studs and get that baby out and let's do it All right guys, so I got the driver's side axle out. As you can see, um, it just pretty much fell right out, uh, which is good, I guess. <laughs> so that made it easy on me. And now I'm doing the passenger side. I'm removing those two bolts um, that basically bracket and hold the axle up to the engine. So I'm gonna take those two off. Um, I might try to leave the tie rod end in on the, uh, system there instead of actually pulling everything out because honestly after I started taking things off I realized that it I don't think all the brakes and everything needed to come off like they said I think that that's if you're gonna use um, their special service tool which kind of like grabs everything um, on the hub and then pushes the axle through if the other one comes out that easy 
I just don't think it's necessary. Inside, I hope you'll be able to see it, but I can't move it because my hands are so greasy. Um, there's basically this is like a two piece axle it's one piece but it looks like it's two pieces and there's a bracket in here that bolts up to the engine what I did is because I'm not reusing these CVs um, is I hit on the metal the round metal part on the inside closest to the transmission by that bracket and I hit it this way just to separate that bracket from the axle. So um, it came loose really, really easy. And I will try to show you how that works. And I should have safety glasses on under here. Please. It was so easy. Oh my gosh, it's so easy. Oh my gosh. Okay. And there we go. Passenger side axle's out. All right. I look like a hot mess. Anyway, that was literally probably the easiest thing that I've done on this car so far. Everything else has been like super duper stuck and those popped right out. So I don't know if it was all the CV grease that was flinging around in there that made it easy, but those things slid out like nothing. So that is positive, big positive. All right, cross members are out. So we've got everything loose from the transmission. And I'm gonna do one more double check of the top there. And then we're gonna come up with something to support this and get it out. Use the cherry picker and wrap some fish rope. Fish tape. Fish tape around the tranny and use that to lower it to the ground since we didn't have a transmission jack. And now she's safe on the ground. And I don't think we broke anything. We found the problem. We have a messed up clutch. So this piece of metal is just totally broken out. And then here's the spring. It's all shredded. And uh, these are getting pretty shredded too. So. Good news, I guess. <laughs> At least something was actually broken instead of taking apart the whole car for no reason. I remember her.